to, to see. Then we go down to um. There's no, no, there's no five. Number, there's no five. There's no seven. Five. Right. Right. Six. We go six. Skip six. Then we do zero, zero. three three. There you go. Uh, uh, karma, 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 karma. Yes. And then seven. And it's what? Zero. Exactly. You got it right. Okay, so now, now, Mr. Lucas and Mr. Osorio, can you just give us an explanation of the first thing that you did? What is N here? What did you do with the data set? Add it. No, from up here. We, we, we you counted it, right? We, sort, we, we put it in numerical order, but there was a trick, or there was an error on the test that I would like to specify. What is it? Here in the 30, in the bracket, the, the, um, the stem of threes, yeah. it's, in, it's out of order. So the actual order should be 30, 30, I mean 30, 33, 33, and then 34. Right. But on the test, you had it in this way, in this fashion. So we needed to, we were supposed to, on the board or mm -hmm. on a piece of paper, mm -hmm. sort it. Sort it correctly. Okay. So it would have been 33, right. then 34. Very good. Okay, but that was a trick that you, I guess, threw in there. Well, people and then, solve it. Yeah. Okay, with the, all the uh, sourcing of the numbers that we of the data set, yeah. it wound up to be 20 numbers. Right. So there should be 20. It, it should be. Um, How are you going to count it? How are you going to count it? Six, seven. How Lucas, come here. Step up to the board. Now you kind of you was you were the one who originally counted how many data is up here, right? Yeah. You came, n is equal to what? The number of data values is what? Twenty. Now how are you going to confirm from your stem and leaf plot that you have the original twenty that you started with? How do you do it? How do you count it? Well, you go start from zero and then you go by the second numbers. How many times you see zero, but go by the second number. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. That's an A plus. That's A plus. That's Thank you. Leaf. Thank you very much. Talk it through. Talk it through. Oh, you recording now? And I was yeah. just going to. All right. Go so we're looking for the median. Hi, my name is Cam. We're looking for the median. <laughs> <laughs> so our data set numbers is zero one. Zero four nineteen twenty seven and eighty seven. First off, anybody know where them numbers come from? Your birthday. Yeah. <laughs> and what? <laughs> Not my real age. <laughs> no. Not my real age. All right, so <laughs> we have a data set. First we're gonna count our data set, which is one, two, three, four, five. Being that we have five numbers and equals Five, we know that our median is going to be directly in the middle, which will be this number right here of 19. 19 is our median number because Emma! our data set is even. Now, if we would have did a our, um, our median, our data set is odd. If we would have did a even number like one, four, five, six, and um, yeah, we could do these as four. four. Right. Okay, so we are add these two numbers, which that will give us nine, and we're divided by two, right? Which would give us, I mean, cool. yeah, which would give us four and a half. So how would that work? Which would be four if we round it? No, leave it the way it is. Okay, so that's the number. Yeah. All right, so that's the median. That's the median. So why don't you go over it again? If the if the data if the data set is Odd. The, what number do you pick? If the data set is odd, you always go with the number that's directly in the middle. And an easy way to figure that out is you go from side to side and cross it out until you get to the middle, which would be that right there. Very good. And if the data set is even, for this one, the data set was four. So we had an even number. So we crossed this one out, we crossed this one out, and these two was left in the middle. So we added it up, which gave us nine. And then we divide it by two because now we want to find the mean for those two numbers. And or the, the median, right? The median. But, we, all right, the median. Right. So we get 4.5. Now, what if we were to erase all of this at the bottom, right? Now, what we're going to do, what if we want to find the average? And let's see how different this is from the average, if you find the average now. Remember the formula gotta, for the average? You got no, no, hold on. You remember the average? How do you do the average now? You, you so if we wanted to summation, find the average, x, x, x bar, x bar, 
X bar, right? Remember X bar equal summation. Yeah, but you have to what you gotta put N over here, right? Oh, over N. Right. Okay. Right. And that's, so e that's yes, that will be equal to what? Your average, right? Equal put the X bar here. Equal X bar. Right. And then right. Okay? Okay. Now equal add all those up. What you what you get? Okay, so somebody help me out here. No, just add it. 14 Excuse me, it's just going to oh. be so 14, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, Nineteen. 20, no, this is ten. So 20, 20, 10 plus 28. twenty-four plus four is twenty-eight. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what did she 10, get? Thirteen. One thirty-eight. Okay. Divided by five. Okay. So let me go over here. One thirty-eight over five. Anybody want to help me out with that one right there? Um. Okay. So if this if seventy-nine point eight is one point four zero. How would you place 79 on the x scale here? Right, so you would know that well, between 1 and 2 is 1.5, right? Mm -hmm. So 1.4 is going to be very close to 1.5. Mm -hmm. So right below 1.4, you put 79. Exactly, right below 1.4, you put 79. Very good. Very good. So you get the idea. So you see why the formula is being used, right? Huh? Any Hi, this is uh, Mr. Professor McAllister here in the uh, statistics class, spring 2014. I'm sitting with one of my students, a student, Theopolis. And uh, we yeah. want to know, we want to know what his experience was this semester in statistics. Was there any doubt at all in the beginning that you can um, persevere this course? You, you know. I wouldn't say doubt, um, rust, okay. rust. Um, I love math, so this is this is my best subject. Uh, I find myself to be more comfortable. You know how you say a bare skin, in his skin. I'm home right now. This is this is what I like. Okay. Um, Professor McAllister, he helps, he guides, he molds, mm -hmm. things you. like that. Um, it's a basic enjoyment. I mean, I've always had a fascination with numbers and statistics just helps bring that fascination out. It's yeah. always something new with probability and cause. And I say my uh, my weakest point might have been with the Z-curve. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the Z-scores. The Z-scores. The Z-scores, yeah, the Z -scores. The Z -scores. The Z -scores. yeah that's challenges for everybody, even uh, teachers of statistics, Z-scores. Well, it I really mean, is. I look at it now and I'm not, you know, yeah. I'm not even confused anymore. I know yeah. exactly where the mean term is set with the X on yeah. the X bar. You yes. know, it's a lot of things that I learned, but I didn't really pay attention to the first time. Right. That now I'm seeing it again, and now it's coming to the universe. So it's, it's very so good, very good. So, so what did you get from the difference between the mean and the median? In terms of, let's say, salaries. You're working for a company. Somebody's making an outlier, a hundred thousand dollars. Everybody is making twenty. Right, but could that be deceptive? It, of course, it's always yeah. deceptive. That's the main part of business is to be deceptive. Okay, I can make it look like everybody's making a higher scale pay. Right. I can get more money into my company when they think that everything's balanced out even. Exactly. However, exactly. when you look at all the information, you find that there's one person making a high salary, right. and everybody else is at the medium or lower salary, and it still compensates the same way. So is that why we have like Z scores to see you dispersion to see exactly where somebody is? Oh, yeah, we can see exactly wow. where, where it's at. Right. And be able to tell you exactly what the quality of that information is as far as doing research right. and looking at other companies and comparing, especially when you're out there looking for that job. Remember, once we graduate, we're looking for bigger and bigger things. So, right. you know, the idea is to know where you're going, know the companies that you're going to, and possibly hit the bigger companies for that big money. So. Now that we know how to do the Z scores, you know, we can kind of throw that up under the bridge now. Did you realize that the textbook had a lot of practical problems? Was that good for you? Practical, real life. I yeah. mean, when you go through the pages, giving you set examples, showing you things that's happening currently in the world today, and it's like, okay, 
we're going to be looking at this going into our future. So yeah. how is it not possible that we can't memorize this information and take it to the next step? Because you know, that's the goal of statistics. Especially when they're dealt with like blood types, right? Well, the blood types, um, let's see, what do we do? We dealt with the blood types, we dealt with the groups, we dealt with salary. Heights, uh, temperatures. Heights, temperatures, yeah. range, location. Uh, parking, actually theft in the city, uh, insurance uh, yes. situations. Yeah, we, we so it wasn't it wasn't that as hard as it seemed. It, it wasn't it, no, everything related, right? To a certain degree, you just absorb it and let it come out. But things are related. It was related. Yeah, all related, <laughs> right? All related, and and it all comes down to the same thing. Because you you look at a uh, group class size. Exactly. W what else did you do? You did the uh, the, the bar graph. Bar and graph. Continue with the histogram. Yeah. And the frequency and polygon. Right, correct, correct. And then disperse, dispersion. 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 Yeah, so right. you gotta make sure that when you're following through, you do all your steps. Don't don't miss nothing, especially adding up the tallies at the end. Don't don't forget that. Well it seemed like um if you really did well in this class, everything just synthesized into one commonality. I think that's what happened. All the topics yeah. just merged. Right, it's and everything was interrelated to each other. Oh yeah. Which was awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Theopolis. Oh, you, wait a minute. How about for those students coming behind you um, in terms of this class? Should they be afraid of it? No, nah, don't be afraid. As they say, don't be afraid of the monster. He's just in the closet. <laughs> Here at the College of Neuro Show, he just completed math anxiety and statistics. And he's going to speak to us about his experiences this semester and how he overcame. It's not stage fright. It's class right yes. in mathematics. Come on, how did you do this? Well, usually I'm pretty good in math, but when it comes to statistics, there's a whole new area of math that I have no idea what I was doing. Wow. And um, it was difficult. I tried and tried on my own to figure out the equations, the problems, the formulas, but unfortunately I wasn't able to. As a teacher, I had instructed our students to take time to find a study partner, yes. which I did, which is Ivy. Yes. And you know, some of the students and attend tutoring classes with Tyler. Yes. Um, when we got to Tyler, he simplifies some of the concepts and the equations of the formulas that we had to learn mm -hmm. in this math statistics class. Yes. And the nervousness, the, my emotions, is what really is my problem. Legitimate problems that I don't quite understand right. in the concepts of the formulas. And gradually, in due time of continuously studying and practicing, I gradually start calming down my emotions and form this to start forming my memory. And I start understanding and comprehending the mathematics of statistics and continually studying. You, know, you have to study three hours if you have to. You had to create your own formulas to truly understand the steps. Right. Or your own problems. Right? Your problems. The formulas are there. Right, right. The problems. Right. I create right. the problems. Right. Right. And I finally I got more comfortable. But when it came to the exam, I still was nervous. I started shaking. <coughs> I had to count to 10, you know, I think to calm you got, down. You got over 80 in the exam. Yeah. You overcame. Yeah, I overcame of it. Right. I'm still kind of nervous because, you know, it was so much a short period of time. But you know, I'm still continuing to practice. So, so if you were to apply to a graduate program you, and they ask you the statistics, would you be confident that you know enough of oh, it? Yes. Okay. Yes. I would do what I know. Right. Do right. what you know first. Okay. Right. Right. right exactly. <laughs> I tell you, must do what you know first. Right. Then you can explain it. You can explain the steps yes. of the equation or the problems that you're doing. Yeah. Basically, you basically got it. Off the top of your head, which was the most challenging topic? To me, it was the means, minds, and the modes. <laughs> okay, okay. Understanding the difference between those two, yes. you know, it's difficult because the, the averages is the means, right. and the modes is the midpoint. Or the number of oh, numbers that occur the most. Right, right. So right. That was my perfusion for most of the time. Yeah, can you see now that statistics can be manipulated as well? In, in industry, in business? Well, you can yeah. come to statistics and uh, probabilities, yeah. you know, of events that may occur. Yeah. Yes. So it's a matter of interpretation. Exactly. And whose hands the data lies on, yeah. right? And how they interpret the data, right? Yeah, if it's, let's say it's random, you know, right. random situations that events may occur. Okay. Yes. Okay, Mr. Middleton. Thank well, you. thank you. All right. Congratulations. Congratulations to the class of 2014. All right, give it up for <laughs>